What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dustin's Fish Tank's bringing it to you with a little bit of a sentimental note today. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, one of the great founding fathers of our beloved aquarium hobby has passed away. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the great contributions he has made to the hobby as well about some of the not so great contributions he has made. But more important, I'm going to talk about the significance of this man to me and the hobby that I now know and love. Like most good fish tank stories for me, it starts at about the age of 14 years old when I was first injected with the poison that is the aquarium hobby, a uh, bug that I've had for over 20 years now. Note, if you're looking for one of the secrets of life, I recommend that you try to recreate the things you did when you were 14 years old. I still do a number of these things, hiking, snowboarding, and of course, aquariums. So it was at this young age when I really got absorbed into the aquarium hobby. As a young kid, I was actually seeking out as much knowledge as I could on the topic. This included any single magazine, old or new, that I could get my hands on. One such magazine uh, was called Tropical Fish Hobbyist. I would like to go on record here that I've never actually had a subscription to Tropical Fish Hobbyist until uh, many years later. This was in the early dawn of the internet where limited info could be found uh, about aquariums online with the exception one I do remember was the crib ran by Eric Olson out in Washington. My passion for the hobby was done alongside my buddy David Jolly. His parents had a family friend named Jim who turned out to also have the fish tank bug as an adult. I can remember it like yesterday I was sitting on a beautiful northern Ohio summer's evening we went over to Jim's house in the back of Jim's house was one of the most epic ponds that I had seen up until that point in my life. Now in hindsight, it was actually mixed with fancy goldfish and koi, but nonetheless, to a 14 year old kid, a massive garden pond with koi and goldfish in it was really amazing. It was pretty overstocked now when I think about it, but nevertheless, my jaw was on the drawer the entire time and the typically chatty Dustin was quiet for a few minutes. As I wiped the drool from my mouth and regained composure, I remember Jim mentioned that he had a present for both David and I. His present was two boxes of the old tropical fish hobbyist. Uh, these were the old style. They had the entirely black cover with the white lettering. Jim wasn't just a hobbyist passing on some old magazines. To me, Jim was a heroin dealer, mainline injecting me into fish tank hobby heroin. An addiction that I don't intend on trying to kick. But it wasn't just Jim who was happily poisoning me with the hobby. Who was the man behind these great magazines? His name was Dr. Herbert Axelrod. You might recall some species that have Herbert or Axelrod eye in part of their name. Yes, Dr. Herbert Axelrod has passed away. Let me ask you a question, folks. How many of you have written a book that's this thick about aquariums? Let me ask you, folks. How many of you have multiple species of fish named after you? Yes, Dr. Herbert Axelrod has passed away. Here are just some of the fish that he has either discovered or had named after him. But despite founding a magazine that's an early cornerstone to our great hobby and discovering many of the great fish that you and I both know and love, you can't look past the dark spots in Dr. Herbert Axelrod Eye's life. Uh, a guy named Nathan Hill with Practical Fish Keeping Magazine over in the UK has written a wonderful article that more eloquently uh, outlines his life as an obituary. I am going to quote some of it here, including filing false tax as well as diverting money into a Swiss bank account. Axelrod failed to appear in court. He insisted on traveling to Cuba where he pled no wrongdoing to journalists who tracked him down. Uh, with a warrant now against him for his arrest, he traveled to Europe and used an Austrian visa that he got during his uh, some philanthropy events that he did. Authorities caught up with him at Berlin's Tegel Airport and after six months in German prison he was extradited and uh, imprisoned in New Jersey. He pled guilty to a charge of tax fraud and was handed 18 month sentence of which he served 16 months. He was also fined 40 grand. And I've heard other more dramatic accounts from uh, great individuals in this hobby. I was driving around in a car with Gary Lang checking out fish rooms in St. Louis when he referred to him as Dr. Asshole Rod Eye, uh, referring to how he sold Tropical Fish Hobbyist publication. But say all the above asshole rod eye stuff is true, and quite frankly, it probably is. You still cannot 
discount the amount of influence that he's had on the aquarium hobby. I'm going to quote Nathan's article in Practical Fish Keeping Hobbies again. It was Axelrod along with Willie Schwartz who set up the cardinal tetra industry in Barcelos back in the 1950s, okay? Given the Cardinals account for 80% of the arsenal fisheries in that region, Axelrod's impact on the region and subsequent conservation was great. In recent years, Project Paiba, which is something I actually want to travel on with, uh, continues the legacy of Axelrod, a project he donated heavily into in the 1990s, leading to the development for the Center of Aquatic Conservation. Reportedly, Axelrod was once asked by then President of Brazil, Humberto Castillo Branco, I butchered that, to draw conservation plans for a wider swaths of the Amazon. He was involved in conserving the Amazon, okay? And no matter what your opinion on Dr. Herbert Axelrod Eye, or as Gary Lang calls him, Herbert Asshole Rod Eye, contributions of this magnitude to this great aquarium hobby simply cannot be denied. I'm not suggesting he isn't what the rumors or facts state. I mean, the guy evaded tax evasion and ran to another country. Uh, and you know has a lot of bad things going for him, but I would argue this and I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I believe Dr. Herbert Axelrod I Was arguably the most influential person to ever touch the aquarium hobby and the aquarium industry Can you name another one? I'd love to get your feedback on this. Love to get your comments on this. Have you kept any of these fish that we've shown here today? Have you heard about Herbert Axelrod before? Do you have any of his books? Have you seen his giant Bible? Drop me a comment on this. Uh, do me a favor. If you like what we're doing, subscribe, like, share, whatever you got to do. Make it an awesome week and tank on.